These questions are parallel to the January 2011 Regents exam, Integrated Algebra, in New York State. Uh, it's the part one, which are 30 multiple choice questions. They're parallel to them. They're not identical. The first thing that I want you to notice is that this is going to be labeled number one, so that's parallel to question number one in the green book for January 2011. Given the sets <coughs> A, B, and C are the following numbers, what is the intersection of sets A, B, and C? Questions 1 through 7 are basically going to be vocabulary questions or some simple procedural questions. This is a vocabulary question. Intersection means where they cross or where all the numbers are the same. They do not all have a 2, so 2s are out. They do not all have a 3, so 3s are out. Do they all have a 4? No, set C does not have a 4, so 4s are out. They obviously don't have 5 because set A starts at number 6. Do they all have a 6? Yes, they all have a 6. Continue checking. Do they all have an 8? Yes, they all have an 8. Do they all have a 10? No. So the answer is in braces, 6 and 8. We check the multiple choice selections after uncovering them to see which ones are the same. It's choice 2. Let's go on to the next part. You can hit pause to uh, write down some notes if you need to. Which graph could be used to find the solution set? Solution set just means answer to the systems of equations. Systems of equations just means that we have more than one equation. The first equation that we look at, we notice that this is a line. And the second one, we see that it's a parabola. How do I know it's a line? Because the exponent is a 1. How do I know it's a parabola? Because the highest exponent is a 2. OK, so that doesn't help us because all four choices are lines and parabolas. When we take a look at the parabola, the standard form of an equation is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. When a is positive, as I was saying, if a is positive, it opens up. If a is negative, the parabola opens down. So examining this, we see that a is positive. The parabola has to have the opening on the top. We can immediately eliminate choice 2 because the opening is on the bottom. We can eliminate choice 3 because the opening is on the bottom. With the line, we want to examine the slope. If the slope is positive, it's going to be going up from left to right. If the slope is negative, it's going to be going down from left to right. Two-thirds is a positive number, so this is the parabola that opens up, and it has a positive slope. That's what the Regents wants you to know. You can always double-check by graphing it on your graphing calculator. I'm going to go on to the next question. Question number three. What's the relationship between the independent mean the x variable, and the dependent, meaning the y variable, in the accompanying scatter plot. Do not connect the dots. A plot is just the dots done. A line would be connecting them. There is no such thing as an undefined correlation. We take a look at these and see that, in general, they are going down from left to right. That's the trend. So that's a negative correlation. As x increases, as x increases, y is decreasing. That's a negative correlation. Let's take a look at the next one. It's also question number three. What's the relationship between the independent and dependent variables in the accompanying scatter plot? These are leveling off. Again, there's no such thing as an undefined correlation. They're not going down. It's not going down from left to right. It's not going up from left to right. There is no correlation. As x increases, y can be anywhere, up, down, or the same. 
So that's why there's no correlation to that at all. The last question, like number three, what's the relationship between this independent and dependent variable in the company scatter plot? You try to answer this question. I'll give you a few moments. It is number three. It's a positive correlation. Okay, now let's take a look at number four. Sylvia ate 12 more. Oh, by the way, with this question, what I like to do with a word problem that's this complicated, I like to cover up the choices while I'm trying to answer it, do the work, take a look if the choices are the same. I suggest that you write this down. Hit pause, write down the question, and then we'll go over it together. Sylvia ate 12 more fish than Garfield. Fluffy ate three times as many fish as Sylvia. If X represents the number of fish Garfield ate, which expression represents the number of fish Fluffy ate? So Garfield is X. I'm defining the variable. Why do I want to do this? There are a whole bunch of words here. Algebra is based on equations. And it says, if X represents the number of fish Garfield ate, which expression, so which kind of equation without an equal sign, represents the number of fish fluffy ate, so I'm going to have to write some equations or expressions. X represents the number of fish Garfield ate, Garfield equals X. And Sylvia ate 12 more fish than Garfield. 12 more means I'm going to add to Garfield. So Sylvia, I put a little line through the S just so I know it's not a 5, Sylvia is 12 more than means add to Garfield. If you put G plus 12, that's correct also, because addition is commutative. Fluffy ate three times as many fish as Sylvia. So Fluffy is three times as many as Sylvia. It asks, which expression represents the number of fish that Fluffy ate? That's the expression. We look at our choices. It's not there. We cover it up. We notice that we need x in here. Instead of writing, again, instead of writing an s, everywhere we see an s, we can write the 12 plus g. So f equals 3. Please remember to put it in parentheses. 12 plus g. Um, but guess what? Instead of writing G, we're going to have to write X in a second. So it's 3 times 12 plus X. Let's see if that is here. It looks like this one. The only difference is that we commuted the 12 and the X. We can commute them because addition is commutative. We can change the order. You can hit pause and copy down the notes if you want to, if you haven't been taking notes all along. Let's go on to the next question. Which relationship is a function? They are not going to provide you a piece of scrap of graph paper. However, I highly recommend that you use graph paper. The graph paper is at the end of the test booklet. We'll rip that out of the test booklet and use it for questions just like this. Which relationship is a function? What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit pause and I'm going to graph number one. So I plotted choice one. It's asking which of the ones is a function. Well, if we notice, a function means for every x value that we plug in, there can only be one y value. Well, here, when x is 2, there are two y values, one of which is 5 and the other one is 8. When x is 2, we have two y values. One of them is 8 and one of them is 5. So which is a function? No, that's not a function because... For every x, there is only one y value. Now let's see if we can do choice 2 without graphing them. For every x, there's a 3, and there's a 3. Uh-oh. For every x, there's only one y value. There's an 8 and a negative 6. No, that one's wrong because we have x duplicated, and we don't have the same y number there. 
for every X, there's only one Y. There's a 2, there isn't a 2. There's a 4, up oh, there's another 4. For every X, there's only one Y, we have a different Y. For every x, negative 3, there's no negative 3. 5, there's no other 5. 7, there's no other 7. Great. For every x, there's only one y value. I do not care if the y's repeat. Just as long as the x's do not repeat, it's a function. You may get them as a list of points. You may get it as a graph. If we get it as a graph, we notice that for every x, there's two y values there, so that's not a function. If this point wasn't here, or let's even say that point wasn't there, this would be a function. If I cover up that x, that star, there's no two x values that are the same. So those three points would be a function. Add that fourth point, it's not a function. Let's take a look at the next question. Make sure you write down function means for every x there is only one y. What's the value of x in this equation? Again, very straightforward. Getting myself a little room so that I can do the work. I distribute 3 times x, 3 times negative 12. It's 3x minus 36. Distribute 3 times 9 is 27x. 9 times 15 is minus 135. Okay. I need to find the value of x in the equation. That means isolate x. Personally, I like to subtract the smaller x's. I have negative 36 equals 24x minus 135. After adding 135 to both sides, let's see if you can beat me to this. I get 99 equals 24x. If 99 equals 24x, dividing both sides by 24, using your calculator, you do 99 divided by 24 and get 4.125 equals x. Let's take a look at the choices. These choices did have repeating bars over them. So, be careful. This time they did negative 4.125 as choice number three. If that was choice number one, you may have jumped to it right away. The answer is positive four and one eighths. You can check it by putting 4.125 in for x, do 4.125 minus 12 times three first, and then do 4.125 times three, uh, subtract 15 and multiply it by nine. You'll get the same answer that comes out. Let's look at number seven. The rectangle shows, uh, shown has a diagonal of 22 and a half centimeters and it is labeled and a height of 10 centimeters. It's a rectangle. It's the nearest centimeter. What's the length of the rectangle? If I put X here, that's somewhat convenient. This is a better location. Remember, opposite sides of a rectangle are the same. Why did I want to do that? Let's highlight a part of this. We notice here are the three sides that I have. Guess what? It makes a right triangle. We remember the Pythagorean theorem. Leg squared plus leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. We plug in the numbers, 10 squared plus x squared equals 22.5 squared. Yes, I am going to use a calculator. I square 22.5 and get 506 and a quarter. I square 10 and I get 100. Subtracting 100 from both sides. I get x squared equals 406.25. Well, how do I get the solution here? You have to take the square root. The opposite of squaring is square root. So the square root of 406 is, don't forget the quarter in there, 406 and a quarter, is an irrational number. So 
I read the directions again, and it says to the nearest centimeter. That means I am going to round 20.15 and so on, 564437. Rounds to the nearest centimeter as being 20 centimeters. This concludes problems 1 through 7. 8 are going to continue on to the rest lesson.